we now continue on to the 17 points of articulation, the 17 Maharij. The first, as we can see, is the Maharaj, is the point of articulation for three letters. Letter number one is Alif. Letter number two is Waw Madda. And letter number three is Ya Madda. Before we make mention of where these three letters originate from, it's necessary we understand what Alif refers to. It's also necessary we understand what Wal Madda and Ya Madda both refer to. Commonly, we usually think that Alif refers to the first letter of the Arabic language, regardless of the manner in which it may appear. Due to this, when we start the recitation of Surah Al Fatiha, we recite Alhamdu. Many of us will say the first letter that appears is an alif. However, the reality is that according to the later scholars, according to the mutaakhirun, this will not be termed an alif. Rather, this will be referred to through the term hamza. For this reason, it's necessary to understand the difference between an alif and a hamza. An alif refers to the first letter of the Arabic language when it appears without any haraka or without a sukun. So if we have the first letter of the Arabic language, which appears with either a fatha above it, a dhamma above it, a kasra beneath it, or a sukun above it. This will not be termed as an alif. Why? Because we now have a harakah upon it. We now have a sukun upon it. So whenever we have the first letter of the Arabic language appearing without a harakah, i.e. a diacritical point, and appearing without a sukun, it will will then be referred to as an alif. Contrary to this, if we find the first letter of the Arabic language and it appears with either a haraka above it or beneath it, or a sukun above it, this will be now termed as a hamza. For example, we've got a, the first letter with a fatha above it. This will be termed a hamza. We've got e the first letter with a kasra beneath it, this will be termed a hamza. Or we have the first letter with a dhamma above it, U, this will also be termed as a hamza. And continuing on, if we find the first letter with a sukun above it, for example, ra'sun, ra'sun, this will also be termed a hamza, it will not be termed as an alif. As a conclusion, I will mention, we can find a Hamza in one of two different forms. Number one is how we usually find a Hamza written within the Arabic language. Or number two, if we find an Alif with either a Haraka above it or beneath it or a Sukun above it. One point to keep in mind is that according to the earlier scholars, we can refer to a Hamza through an Alif. However, the later scholars mention the new terminology, and according to the later scholars, they are very strict between differentiating between a Hamza and an Alif. So when we say Alif, it refers to the first letter without a Haraka or without a Sukun. I will give an example. In the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, we have the word Abasarihim. Abasarihim. Between the Sad and the Ra, we got the Alif. It doesn't have Sukun above it, nor does it have a Harka above it or beneath it. For this reason, this will be termed as an Alif. So the first letter we are dealing with is Alif. It originates from a certain place. 
it's got a specific point of articulation. However, before we go into that, we've got two more letters with it which come from the same place, which originate from the same place. The second is Wow Madda. And the third is Ya Madda. Wow Madda refers to the instance in which we have a Wow Sakina with a Dhamma, with a Pesh before it. Wow Madda refers to the instance in which we have a Wow Sakina with a Dhamma before it. For example, in the glorious Quran, we've got the word Ju'un, Ju'un. Within this word, the second letter is a Wow Sakina. And prior to it, we have a Dhamma upon the letter Jim. Due to finding a Wow Sakina with a Dhamma before it, we will refer to this Wow as Wow Madda. And the third letter, Ya Madda. Ya Madda refers refers to that instance in which we find a Ya Sakina with a Kasra Azir prior to it. A Ya Sakina with a Kasra prior to it. An example from the glorious Quran, we have the word Filun, Filun, Fa Ya Lam. The second letter within this word is Ya, it has a Sukun above it. In other words, a Ya Sakina. And prior to it, we have a kasra beneath the fa. Therefore, this ya will be referred to as ya sakina. Whenever we find any of these three letters, number one, alif, number two, a wow sakina with a dhamma before it, or number three, a ya sakina with a kasra before it, these three letters will originate from the interior cavity. They will originate from the emptiness of the mouth. What does interior cavity refer to? What does the emptiness of the mouth refer to? It refers to that portion of the mouth which comes right in the middle. Let's go back to an example I mentioned. We take the example of Abasarihim. Abasarihim. So this alif which appears between the sod and the ra, this is pronounced in a manner that the sound is coming from the middle, the emptiness of the mouth, sa. Therefore, we say that the point of articulation for each one of these three letters is the interior cavity, the emptiness of the mouth. These three letters are referred to through various names. One name given to them is Jofia. Jofia. Jean, Wow, Fa, Ya, and the round Ta. Jof refers to the emptiness of the mouth. They are called Jofia as they originate from the emptiness of the mouth. Another title given to them is Hawaiya. Hawaiya. Why? Because they end upon the er, A-I-R. Another name given to them is Madda. Why Madda? Madda ya muddu Madda means to prolong, to stretch. So whenever we pronounce any of these three letters, the voice and the sound is stretched. Abasarihim, Ju'un, Filun. For this reason, these three letters are referred to as either Jawfiyah, Hawaiya, or Madda. We now move on to the second point of articulation. Before I make mention of this, if we look towards the third point of articulation and also the fourth point of articulation, from the second point of articulation, we have two letters which originate. From the third point of articulation, we have another two which originate. And from the fourth point of articulation, we have another two which originate. In total, from the second, third, and fourth point of articulation, we have four letters which are, we have six letters which originate. These six letters 
are referred to as huruf halqiya. Huruf halqiya. Halam qafiya. Halqiya. Halq refers to the throat. Due to these six letters originating from the throat, they are known as the letters of halqiya, the throat. Going into a little more detail, we can divide our throat into three different parts. Number one is the top of the throat, which is closest to the mouth. Number two, the middle of the throat. And after number three, the bottom of the throat, which is closest to the chest. From each one of these three different parts of the throat, two letters originate. So two letters originate from the bottom of the throat. Two letters originate from the middle of the throat. And two letters originate from the top of the throat. Which two letters originate from the bottom of the throat? Which two letters originate from that part of the throat which is closest to the chest? Furthest away from the mouth, the answer we find in the second point of articulation, Hamza and Ha, originate from the part of the throat which is closest to the chest. So two letters, Hamza and Ha. When we say Hamza, it either refers to Hamza in the form and the manner we find it before us in the second point of articulation, or it refers to having an alif with a dhamma or a fatha above it or a sukoon above it or having a kasra beneath it. So hamza originates from the bottom of the throat and similarly the letter ha also originates from the bottom of the throat. We can take an example. Alhamdu. Alhamdu. So when we say a, a, we find that the noise, the sound is coming from the bottom of our throat closest to our chest. And similarly, the letter ha, when we say bismillah, bismillah, this ha, the sound of it is coming and this letter is originating from the bottom of the throat closest to the chest. We move on. To the next point of articulation. This is the middle of the throat. This is the second part of the throat. From the middle of the throat, we have two letters which originate. Number one, Ain, and number two, Ha. These two letters originate from the middle of the throat. When we say the middle of the throat, then for the men, we can say middle of the throat is where the Adam's apple is situated. And for those who find it difficult to refer to the Adam's apple, then we can say to them that when you usually pick up your spectacles and you want to clean them, before you wipe the glass with the cloth, you blow upon them. And whilst blowing upon them, you make the sound or the sound is heard so the place from which the noise originates when an individual is about to clean his spectacles whilst he is blowing upon them, that is the point of articulation of the two letters, Ain and Ha, and that is the middle of the throat. We are now left with the last portion, the last part of the throat. And this is the fourth point of articulation. The part of the throat which is nearest to the mouth the part of the throat which is furthest away from the chest. We have two letters which originate from this point of articulation. Number one, غين, and number two, ها. Number one, غين, and number two, ها. One or two points I want to mention regarding these two letters. When we pronounce these two letters, yes, we need to ensure they come from the top of the throat. However, whilst pronouncing them, we need to ensure the back of our tongue does not vibrate against the palate above it. 
we need to ensure the back of our tongue doesn't vibrate against the soft palate. The back of our tongue should only be raised towards the soft palate. Many of us pronounce غين and خا in the manner you will hear very soon. أغ, 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 أغ. We find this rough noise within it. This rough noise we find is due to the back of our tongue vibrating against the soft palate. This is incorrect. We pronounce these two letters. They originate from the top of the throat. However, we need to ensure that in pronouncing these two letters from the top of the throat, we do not allow the back of our tongues to vibrate with the soft palate. Yes, they are only to be raised towards the soft palate. Once we ensure that they don't vibrate against the soft palate, they are only raised towards the soft palate, we will realize that roughness and that vibration within the pronunciation of these two letters will slowly, slowly start going away and the pronunciation of these two letters will slowly but surely become perfect. Now we move on to the fifth point of articulation which I want to mention alongside the sixth point of articulation. The fifth point of articulation is of the letter of, whereas the sixth point of articulation is for the letter kaf. These two letters are known as either lahatiya, lahatiya, or they are known as lahwiya. So either lahatiya or lahwiya. Lahat refers to the uvula. If we go into our mouths and we take a look behind the back of our tongue, more towards our throat, after placing a mirror, before our mouths, we will find something dangling. This is known as the uvula. Due to the two letters qaf and kaf originating from close by to the uvula, they are known as either lahatiya or lahwiya. Yes, even though the two letters come from close to the uvula, there's still quite a distance between where the two letters originate from. It's for this reason we find the point of articulation for the letter kaf different to the point of articulation for the letter kaf. If they were more close, then they would have been mentioned together under one point of articulation. But due to them coming from a little far and a little distant from each other, they have both been mentioned under two different points of articulation. First, we look towards off. Off originates when the back of the tongue touches the soft palate. Off originates when the back of the tongue touches the soft palate. So, alhamdulillah, when we went through the various parts of the tongue and the various parts of the mouth, we came across the back of the tongue, which is quite obvious. And the soft palate is that part of the mouth which is directly above the back of the tongue. So when the back of the tongue touches, the palate directly above it, i.e. the soft palate, that's when the letter off originates. We move on to the next letter which comes from the next point of articulation. This is the letter kaf. Kaf originates when the back of the tongue touches the hard palate. A little closer to the front of the mouth in comparison to the letter of. I want to simplify this for yourselves a little further. Therefore, I request your attention. Once it comes to our tongue, we've got the middle of the tongue and then we have the back of the tongue. 
above the middle of the tongue, we have the hard palate. And above the back of the tongue, we have the soft palate. We've understood on the, under the fifth point of articulation that qaf originates when the back of the tongue touches the soft palate. Now we are discussing kaf. Kaf originates when the portion between the back and the middle of the tongue, I will repeat, kaf originates when the portion between the back and the middle of the tongue touches the palate above it, touches the part of the mouth above it. In other words, we can say the letter kaf originates when the portion of the tongue situated between the back and the middle of the tongue touches the palate situated between the soft and hard palate. After having understood this, we automatically understand that the point of articulation of the letter kaf is a little further forward in the mouth in comparison to the point of articulation of the letter of. So these two points of articulations were linked to the uvula. Therefore, I mentioned they are referred to as either the letters of lahatiya or the letters of lahwiya.